Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0 .90 Beta. In this episode I hope to get into orbit around Earth, really, uh, and that's going to be our primary goal. I might as well pick up this sounding rocket record. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know, but the, I guess we'll need funds to upgrade stuff. I'm, I'm sure we'll need funds. Uh, I have made a few changes uh, to this install. First of all, I installed Van's uh, stock part revamp, which was uh, requested by multiple people in the comments, so that goes in. And so the stock part should look different, I suppose. And I've also upgraded RP0, the tech tree, and everything to 0.21 now. And as I understand it, uh, that means that uh, some parts are going to be labeled as not compatible with RP0 so uh, I didn't even oh uh, let's see is there anything like that here well uh, no uh, let me take a look uh, well that still costs two the Explorer probe core costs quite a decent oh that's entry cost though that's not the actual uh, part cost and this Sputnik uh, the entry cost is very low too the entry cost is much higher for all this stuff than than the actual purchase cost while building a rocket um, okay, so this is, uh, I guess this RP0 no cost means, okay, uh, so part not costed by RP0 but incorrect node. So I guess that means it's not balanced in the tech tree, uh, not, well, it's balanced in the tech tree, not balanced in terms of cost, so, uh, we'll have to lay off of those, I guess. Uh, did, did we have any problems with that? What the heck is that? Uh, Mark 1 LFO barrel. Part not costed by... Uh, well, that looks bad altogether. Whatever that is. Um, that looks wrong. Okay, uh, where, where about our arrow B? Ah, the arrow B has a different, uh, different texture now. I guess that's uh, part of stock part revamp. But the arrow B looks clear. Uh, this one... This looks clear, an AJ-10. Okay. Looks like our engines are going to be all in the clear for for RP-0. So it doesn't look like I was having any problems. Uh, how about the... Well, this still starts out too big, I think. Uh, right now, at our current tech level, it should be limited to 0.75. But anyway, we know that. Oh, I, I, these are the new separation, inline separation motors, huh? Oh, uh, entry cost is zero. I might as well just pick that up. Actual use cost is three. So anyway, uh, so that's uh, another change. So the upgrade to RP zero, and I also add the stock bug fixes because of the way the the decouplers were separating the boosters, and uh, you know that may or may not be necessary, but. Here we go. Let's uh, talk about building. Oh, oh, it went up up there. Uh, a rocket for for orbit. Since I've uh, downgraded the well, I wouldn't say downgraded. There's still uh, six point four point zero is still the current main release of deadly reentry. So, yeah, I think I can go back to using procedural nose cone instead of the we were using the protective this one, protective nose cone, but. You know, actually, for the sake of, since we're going to orbit, uh, we should probably make it an actual satellite, leave it up there. We're not going to retrieve this one. Oh, there's other stuff that isn't uh, kosher. Okay, um, yeah, so we're not going to retrieve this one, so maybe we should make it a communication satellite. What sort of dishes do we have? Um, that'll be under science. Uh, that's a thousand kilometers, only four hundred kilometers, four thousand kilometers. Four thousand kilometers is not great, but in a pinch, it might be the thing that we need. And it only costs five. So yeah, uh, I'll I'll try. It. Well, we'll have to add some. Well, this antenna is good enough for the launch phase. The internal antenna would probably would it get us to orbit? Maybe not. We'll probably need this one anyway. Okay, but uh, I'll keep that for a sec. Should we have a protective nose cone? Let me try. Let, let's try a very, very tiny fairing. I, I wonder if that'll work out. 
And then I can put the antenna in the fairing. Antenna and, uh, and other sensitive parts like batteries. How much would a fairing cost? Just a really, really tiny thing. Well, so far it doesn't cost much. Uh, so let's say, well, let's say I put a, the antenna on. Okay. And let's say I put a fairing on. This looks a little bit weird right now, but. Eh, nine funds, I guess. It's not too bad. <laughs> this looks funny. Okay, um, we're not doing any station keeping with it. We Do we have any sort of solar panelry? Not yet. No, wait, uh, no, that's igniter toolbox. So no solar panels. That's not good. I guess it won't be much of a satellite. Anyway, we'll still need it to be able to communicate. That's a bit tall. Maybe I'll extend this to 0.5. Okay, and then next, it makes sense to have the larger version of the Airbnb. I'm not going for the Vanguard booster or even this AJ-10 upper stage here. Not yet, anyway. So we're trying to keep it small. Ooh, what's that? Oh, the Juno nose cone fairing and instrument section. Uh, what, there are. I mean, we could uh, try and toss Sputnik. Let's let's. Let's wait on uh, Sputnik. I want to try and get this avionics package into orbit first. Uh, wait a minute. Actually, it's a bit heavier, isn't it? No, no, Sputnik is heavier than it. This Explorer probe core is lighter, much lighter. Less than one-sixth the, the mass. It's got a better antenna, too. No, let, let me go with this first. I've already started building this. I don't want to mess around with it. Let's go with this first and then, uh, yeah, okay. I was just checking the mass. And then later on we'll go on to the Explorer probe. I don't like to shift gear like that, though that does look tantalizing. Well, we'll have boosters, but that's not enough. Can we get more than one of those down there? Let's see, do we have a... That's a heat shield, a couple of uh, thrust plate, uh, not costed by RP0. Does it matter whether it's costed by RP0? I'm just trying to attach two of these things onto the bottom here. Is there any part? Well, I guess uh, we could. This is not costed by RP0 either. Let me just take a look. What What is the price that it... Does it have any price? Maybe? Some price? Yeah, it has a price. I mean, it doesn't have the right price, I guess, is the thing. But I'm making it very small. If it was really large, I guess it'd be bad. But I'm making a really tiny part here. And I guess, uh, considering how much the rest of the rocket costs at this size, it's reasonable. And now the boosters. It's still pretty tall. We're going to have to have fins on as well. How are we going to get those on with boosters as well? Well, that gets us close, but still no cigar there. Perhaps four of the little arrow bees on the center. Let's go larger. All the way up to one. Well, what can you do? You just make bigger boosters, right? Pretty big rocket. We're talking about 30 tons here now. Okay, I, I still consider this very much a test subject. I don't think of this as a German color scheme so much as a crash test dummy sort of thing. I guess I'll have to use... well, it is a larger rocket anyway. I'll just make them a little bit smaller. Well, this has uh, fins and everything. This will be beta 2. OK, 
Okay, but I do want to action group that antenna. It's bound to be wiggling around too much for me to do it otherwise. Oh, our uh, mass limit is no longer 18 tons as well. Huh. 9 tons. These are... Well, it, the, the mass all looks right. Okay. I'm tempted to send the Explorer Probe Core out because this is so expensive already, but... Well, let's test this out. I, I want to see where this can actually get into space. Uh, I mean, not just space, orbit. We've got trajectory to worry about as well. We don't have very much control at all. Alright, let's uh, put launch clamps and do this. Uh, the Delta V, I don't know. It's still possible. Well, unless something horrible happens, that uh, seems to be all right. Let's have the boosters light at the same time as launch clamps. Sort of a typical pattern. Okay. Let's go. Okay, I said let's go, but now craft is too large for launch pad. Oh, oh, dimension, oh, that ways. Uh, the height is too, too large. Okay. Well, that, that can be figured out. Still too tall by 2.2 meters. Is that just because of the launch clamps, really? Oh, it's just because of the launch clamps. Jeez. Just needed to bring this down a bit. How weird. Okay. Well, anyway, it's a little bit squat, but but maybe it looks better this way. All right, so this will be beta two. How did the delta V go down? I increased the size of the top stage. This thing is frustrating me to no end. Every time I touch anything, the delta V goes down. May oh maybe the fairings are heavier, but I'm gonna dump those pretty quickly. Well, let's go to four minutes on this top stage. Not saying that'll solve the problem, but it'll get us a little bit closer. All right, let's see how close this gets. Now, we're obviously launching with way less thrust to weight ratio than I had with the totally uncontrolled no fin launches, and I'm hoping that the fins will take care of it. I'm already gonna push caps locks for the for the fine control. We don't have any SAS modules. Uh, throttle up. And let's go. Okay, I'm gonna make a suggestion in the correct direction. That's it. Don't wanna do too much there. Gravity will probably still do most of it. I don't know if these fins can really defeat gravity like that. I doubt it. Uh, it's not rotating quickly enough for me. I'm giving it a little bit of more of a nudge. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Don't do that. Uh oh, uh oh. I'm doing too much. Doing too much. Oscillation's bad. Okay, settling down, though not quite at the pitch I want. I'd really like to be closer to 60 right now. I'll try and do it judiciously here, give it more of a nudge, but still the controls are a little bit 
responsive. Ooh, that gave me a start. Trying to get this to pitch down okay. There's a little bit of decoupler thing here. We are going pretty hot here. Ooh, 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 don't do that. Okay, decouple. Let's get rid of you guys. So the procedural SRBs, they don't, uh... Oh, hold on, I've got, uh... uh they don't uh, tail off and thrust like uh, normal SRBs do. I know some of the other SRBs have thrust curves, but I, I guess the procedural SRBs don't. I'm not entirely clear about that. Okay, we're sort of more of in a coast phase now. Deviating a bit. Uh, the aerodynamic controls aren't particularly responsive now. Might eventually have to take off the fine controls, but not in any rush. I really want this lower in pitch. Thankfully our apoapsis hasn't really gotten out of control and we're accelerating pretty slowly now. I wonder if Smart ASS would be better at this than I am. Let's say we go to 95 heading and pitch 40 for a sec. Can you do that, Smarty SS? Well, you're not doing a very good job of it. I'm applying control force here too, and it's not particularly helping. Of course, we're pretty much out of the atmosphere now. Gotta drop fairings. Uh, okay, those are clear. That's good. I think I can extend the antenna as well, but I'll wait until we're officially out of the atmosphere for that. Yeah, this thing is going to point up no matter what I do. I think maybe we should go for the 710 kilometer record. I don't see this gaining enough speed to reach orbit now. We are officially below that, I think. Okay, extending the antenna. Okay, that's the first stage, finally. And second stage. Once again, I, I might actually outstrip the, the next sounding rocket record that I would have been able to get. Because uh, just a few more seconds into this stage, well, maybe a minute into this stage, we're going to reach the apoapsis that we need. Okay, um... I don't suppose there's any... Oh, uh, okay. Let's uh, transmit that. Sure. Then realize we didn't do over Kerbin's water in that situation. Maybe we'll get another biome. So, space just above. So, ah, oh, darn. The Atlantic is a little bit big. If we could sort of head over to Africa, not that we want to land debris of this over the heads of anybody over there, but just saying. 
I wonder how far along in the tech tree we have to be in order to get uh, RCS thrusters. We've got 49 science now. So if we can if we can get them, we can get them. We had a very interesting path away from Cape Canaveral. <laughs> Start out east, now going more south, uh, southeast here. Okay, that's it. We got that contract fulfilled. And we live to fight another day. Maybe instead of having side boosters, we should just have one big SRB at the bottom. <laughs> Uh, though we can't size it more than, uh, was it 0.7? So I guess, well, if we've got the Explorer Probe Core, which I'll unlock immediately after this, uh, maybe maybe that will be the right size for it. Uh, so 2,163, 64 kilometers in altitude we're going here. And are we going to end up over at, uh, no, we're going to end up in, well, we've, we really covered a lot of the Atlantic, but we didn't hit any other biomes. We are now connected to uh, what I suppose is the European Space Agency's center there. And this is going to have a large, oh, now we don't have any connection, probably because of the curvature of the Earth. Well, no. Line of sight, maybe. Maybe also range, because 4,000 kilometers isn't that much. Okay, get ready for loud explosions. Let's see the temperature going here. Okay, I mean, that's obviously as expected, so at least the re-entry is still deadly. Alright, so with that, uh, back to Space Center. So obviously RCS is a thing that we need, but is it a thing we can get? This already costs 50, and we got heat shields, but we don't have RCS there. Oh, here's RCS. So we could do that. Here's some big engines. Wow, those are big engines. Shouldn't that be further down the tree? Um, NK-43, NK-33, these were developed for the N N1 rocket. Were they really uh, ready for 1958 to 1962? I don't think so. I think maybe somehow we haven't gotten these marked up as not for RP0. Cause, and the entry purchase is really cheap. Yeah, so I think uh, the Soviet engine pack is not yet um, not yet ready for RP0. So I'm going to say all of these are no-go. Because uh, these are definitely way ahead of where we're at right now. So I won't touch those. Until uh, until we get to the right time, uh, I I personally like the NK thirty three and NK well I especially like the NK forty three, but uh, especially you know throttling, uh, yeah. Anyway, but uh, it's uh, it's a leader engine. Oh, and this uh, Gamma two engine looks like it's got bad textures. I'll have to figure out what's up with that. Though I I don't even know what the Gamma two engine is. So I don't know what the textures are from, what I'm supposed to be doing with them. Okay, anyway, uh, this is what we want. Three axis stability with early probes. Yep. Uh, so I'm going to spend my science on that. Uh, it's always painful to spend science. Oh, uh, unresearched requirements, okay. Well, the bigger thruster blocks cost more, so let's get the one quarter ones. What is that? A Beechcraft King Air fuselage. 
Is that really balanced by RP0? Probably not. Cordobidine Octo. That's a huge entry purchase. I'm touching that. Solar Panel. That's a pretty big entry purchase too. Let's get something in orbit first before touching the solar panels and like because that's expensive stuff. Uh, what I want to unlock though is that explorer probe. Okay. I think that is just fine. Oh heck, let's unlock Sputnik too. Alright. Okay, so this explorer probe has a range of 500 kilometers, which might be enough to, well, downrange usually gets to around 1,200 during an orbital launch, so maybe we'll need something supplementary to it. Maybe we should just see. It might be interesting to see how small a rocket we can get over, and this is as light a probe as we're going to get. Okay, let me uh, build this off camera and then I'll talk about it. Okay, let me show you what I have so far. So we've got the Explorer probe. It's got a, a little tank here for hydrazine, and it's got RCS thrusters configured to hydrazine. Let's verify hydrazine. Very good. And then this is the tank for the sustainer, the aerobeep. And so we've got the aniline and nitric acid, aniline nitric acid. But we've also we've also got hydrazine here for these RCS thrusters, so that uh, we've got uh, RCS balance. Uh, throughout this third stage. I expect it's the third stage. Uh, now I figured out that I can attach these these Arabi sustainers directly to this without the thrust plate adapter so um, didn't even need that but I don't like the look of this and in particular I also noted that this AJ-10 upper stage engine happens to have gimbling. Not only does it have gimbling, it has RCS so that's a little bit interesting and we really need more control on the uh, on this portion of the flight when the the boosters are off but we're getting through the part where the atmosphere isn't very u useful to us in terms of using the fins so I think I'm gonna have to unlock this so I've got this oh it disappeared there no oh, now it's back okay uh, so I'm gonna unlock that and I'll be looking to use that AJ-10 okay so here we are with the finished rocket as you can see I've opted for these uh, SRBs shaped like a smooth cone and uh, I don't know if I want that texture necessarily uh, maybe that'll look better uh, but uh, actually on initially putting them on uh, the game itself wouldn't have let me launch because it was above 48 tons it's actually supposed to be 24.5 but it's still reading it at 33.7 don't ask me how this works out I have no idea. It's just one of the things that puzzles me. Uh, anyway, uh, we are. I, I don't have fins, as you can see. We're relying on the AJ-10's gimbling, which is about three degrees, uh, to uh, help us out with the control. The Explorer probe core here has stability assist, so that's helpful. Uh, here we have the Aerobee high. I've uh, changed it to high, and so we'll have a little bit more thrust there. Uh, but uh, we're not exactly in the happy zone for orbital delta V, but but we might be able to get there with this. It depends. Also, with the RCS on, on the probe itself, uh, we might be able to get a little bit further. I've also put a supplementary commutatron on the probe. So we've got commutatron 16 so that uh, we can have a longer range communication. I haven't put any other scientific instruments, but I think the Explorer probe has scientific instruments. Uh, instruments so it should be fine. Uh, we're burning the main engine right away because otherwise it won't have any thrust to weight ratio once it lights and uh, so it, we, we, we might as well go ahead and burn it right from the start. Uh, though we don't need the thrust to weight ratio at the start. It uh, hardly contributes to anything as you can see. Um, Alright so I think those that's all the interesting points spoken for. Let's bring it out to launch pad. Uh, it's not letting me launch. I'm somewhat afraid that if I go out and come back in, it's going to tell me that the mass is wrong too. But I guess I have no choice. It's not letting me launch at all. Okay, I'm going to have to restart the program. Okay, I reloaded and look, 
It reads the mass is 53.8. It is the SRBs, by the way. It's, it's, well, I don't know, but it could be some other parts as well. But anyway, let me get the, S reattach the SRBs and hopefully uh, it won't have them at a weird mass. Okay, so here we go again. Yay, it looks like it's going to let us launch. Amazing. Okay. SAS is now a thing. That's new. Okay, let's launch this thing before it decides to wig out or something. So here we go. Main engine and boosters. We should be able to use Smart ESS now that we've got gimbling. So I'll try and make a more accurate launch about it. Not that there's much... Uh oh Doesn't seem like the center engine is lit at all. Uh, this is not right. It says pressurized, not ignited. No connection. I thought the Explorer core already had a antenna. Well, I guess we're just gonna have to find out where this goes. Um, no connection, huh? Well, that's a waste of a lot of funds now. Well, at least it's uh, heading for the ocean instead of inland. Oh boy. That's interesting. Wonder why it did that. It's got some aerodynamic issues. But why didn't the center engine light? That's another thing. It should be hypergolic ignition, so it should have had its. should have lit. It uh, used the ignition, it just didn't stay lit. That's the right fuel for it. It's uh, UDMH and white fuming nitric acid. Electric charge is fine. We had electric charge. Not much of it, but still, it's there. Okay, let's see what happens when it hits. Nope, it just it just disappeared. Darn it! I was hoping for an explosion, but no, didn't even give me that. All right, uh, vehicle assembly. I don't think return to vehicle assembly uh, reverts, so it should be fine. Ignition requires electric charge. Well, there should be plenty of electric charge. Pressurized tanks are connected, yes. Uh, this engine we have in its uh, basic configuration. It's got UDMH and inhibited white fuming nitric acid. That's what we've got in the tanks. This is a surface module tank. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What? That one's not the one that's moving out the lines okay so my mistake there MHN204 now what's our situation well okay let's hope that does the trick somehow missed that these are still configured the burn time is wrong though how did that happen uh, the burn time should be 100 and their mass that the mass is off again Oh, one frustration after another. Now the the Explorer probe core. Omni range. Well, okay, zero. So it needs to be activated. I uh, missed that. Okay, and I guess the other antenna also. When it activates, does it extend? Am I gonna have a case where it's gonna have a problem with the atmosphere? Extend antenna. I'll start deployed. I don't see anything happening. 
Well, I've, I've said start deployed and it seems to not be poking out of anything, so hopefully it'll be alright. Could just add another antenna to it, but... Nope, it's still reading a bad mass. And so if I press launch, it's not gonna let me. Okay, I'll fix this again. Okay. Uh, so that's I, I I'm calling it fixed, but it's not really fixed because if we go back down here, we see that it's still reading 33.7 tons when the mass is supposed to be 24.5. So yeah, it just continues. It just continues. But uh, let's go ahead with this. I'm still not sure how much control having the center engine on is really going to give me. It has gimbling, sure, but it doesn't have that much thrust. I'm hoping that's got to be enough, but there's no telling about that. Now, we won't launch until I'm sure that the center engine is actually... Okay, looks fine. Here we go. Let's see now, 88? No, no, not that. Just 88. Okay. We are still connected and all. Mm, that's a little bit lower than 85 already. Ooh, 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 don't go that far. Don't get that far. No, 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 no. Ooh, that looks like it would flip. But it still looks like it's gonna flip out. Uh, Ouch, 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 ouch. Come on. Pitch. It's uh, trying its best on the pitch, but it's not really there. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. No, 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 no. Uh, tell you what, uh, just, just stay steady. Stay steady. Stay steady. I'm taking manual control here. Pushing down as much as I can. I'm still trying to push down. Hey, uh, can you just go to the prograde vector maybe? Uh, this is not working out very well. No, indeed. Come on. Spill the assist. Wrong way. It's going the wrong way. Okay, okay. High propensity to flip out right now. Definitely need control surfaces still. Got the decoupler overheating thing again. But we're gonna decouple soon, so it's alright. Nice decouple. Let's not deviate too much from prograde, even though we would like to see it a little bit lower right now. Okay, well, it's it's reasonably stable. 
still for the early phase fins. Maybe adding fins to well, adding fins to the boosters might uh, lead them to do crazy things once we uh, decouple them. Ah, we're losing velocity. This wasn't very well done. I am going to jettison the fairings. We're pretty much no go for orbit, but we'll try to get there as much as possible. It's possible that the RCS might be able to push us along too. I'm actually going to disable this hydrazine tank. Okay, my supplementary antenna is out. We're about to run out of the engine gimbling. Okay. Here's the AeroB sustainer high. And I'm gonna turn on the RCS. Whoa, that's a lot of RCS. To stabilize things. Okay, okay. No, it's still drifting off. I guess we do need to keep it on. Huh? Okay, we're coming on to the end of this stage and the maximum TWR this thing sees. Okay, okay. Well, actually, yeah, that's exactly what I want. And so we're not using the fuel from there. We're just using up this hydrazine. Okay, and now we're going to decouple. We're going to activate this tank. And we're gonna thrust forward. Well, let's see how far we get here. Not very far, probably. So let's go to orbit just so we can see that way. So obviously we need about 7.8 kilometers per second. I do like the RCS effects. That's that's very good. So I think after this, uh, I'll unlock another available engine so we don't have to use all those SRVs and have that mass issue all the time. And we'll see what I can do with a new engine. But uh, that's the end of it. Uh, we've actually lost connection right at the right time, I guess. Um, we're about, what, 600 meters per second shy of, of actual orbit. All right, well... Yep, I will try again for orbit in the next episode, but with this, I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.